August 14th, 2021. This is the VPC video devotional series. We are looking at 1 Kings 19. I will be reading for us verses 11 and 12 and 15 through 18. Let's listen as God gives a dramatic moment as a gift to Elijah, the discouraged prophet on Mount Horeb. God says, go out, Elijah, and stand on the mountain before me. I'm about to pass by. Now there was a wind, a wind so strong, Hurricane Force 5, that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks just poof, in pieces. But the Lord was not in that wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. Have you ever been in an earthquake where everything around you starts to shake a little bit? The Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. You know, this scene is a reminder for anyone who's read other parts of the Old Testament of, of Exodus, uh, around Exodus chapter 19 and in and around those chapters where Israel is encamped at Mount Sinai and God appears in the form of fire and in the form of uh, wind and in the, in the earth shattering, an earth shattering storm that shakes everything up. And so um, this is a reminder to the prophet that God is the God who is in control of nature. It's not Baal, but God is the God who's created, created the world. And every source of, of power in the world is, is ultimately subject to his control. Um, but after all this noise and pyrotechnics, this is the part of the passage we're going to concentrate. This translation says, there was a sound of sheer silence. This is a word that's so hard to translate, and that's why different versions of the Bible have different versions. Some call, and after the fire and the earthquake went, there was a still small voice. My favorite translation is there was a whisper. Uh, out east, I used to um, love the time when the snow began to fall. Because you could often, there was a gentle sound of these flakes coming, heavy flakes coming down from above, and they gradually made the world silent. And all the noise went away. There's nothing like a blanket of snow to kind of insulate the world. And of course, people would stop driving if it was a big enough snowstorm so there weren't any cars. And, and the world would become just quiet. And that's what it's like for Elijah. There's just a whisper of God's presence. And then God opens up a new reality. Sometimes we're at the end of the trail. Just beyond the end of the trail, there's a new path. And that's the way it is here. The Lord says to him, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. Go back. All right, go back. Don't give up on your profession. And um, I want you and I want... I want you to have a, a friend, Elisha, who can uh, will eventually become a prophet in your place. He can be a partner, and then he's going to be he's going to be a prophet in your stead. Uh, so you'll have a friend, and you'll have some support, and you'll have someone to share the burden together. And, and I want you to also anoint uh, a new king over Aram. This is a Syrian area. What God is doing is He's beginning to undermine Ahab. He is, he is empowering a new king in Syria who can, who can give opposition to Ahab from the outside. And then he wants another king called Yehu, J-E-H-U, anointed inside, a, a counter king to the, to the king in Samaria who will be a, an oppositional figure. And so from the outside and the inside, there's going to be new political trouble for Ahab, which eventually he succumbs to and Yehu becomes king. And Yehu is a follower of Yahweh and eliminates all the worship of Baal. Um, it's interesting how Elijah thought that he was alone, but God had a plan that was kind of outside the realm of the scope of his vision. And it was a plan to bring him friendship and to bring him community and to bring him support that he couldn't even imagine from other kings outside of the territory who, who, who would, God would use to help this agenda of bringing Israel back away from Baal and toward, uh, toward their true God. It's so gentle, isn't it? 
how God speaks so quietly, has such power, but comes alongside, is so tender in the way he cares for Elijah, and gently he speaks to him and gives him tasks he can do, friends he can relate to, and new opportunities to see uh, God's faithfulness. Let's take a moment and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your power and for your tenderness. Thank you for the moments when you've been tender with us. Help us to live out of the strength of those moments, to trust in your power and your promises, but also to count on your tenderness when we need it, and to be willing to share that tenderness with others who are feeling life's uh, dead ends and defeats at this moment. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for being with us.